In this video, we'll be exploring more of the incredible city of Guangzhou. Yesterday, we were blown away by the futuristic skyline of China's third largest city. So today, we decided to head to a different part of town and explore some new areas. Join us as we devour some more delicious Chinese food and find architecture that makes us question, is this even China? Today's video begins in a familiar place, the East Guangzhou Railway Station. Where are we heading to next? We're going downtown, baby. Let's go. We got some parts, bro. All right, we got our we got our pastries, and now we're waiting in line for a restaurant. It's very busy. I mean, it's like noonish, one o'clock, and there's a wait. They're in a queue. We got a little queue thing. We're lining up to ride our horse. <laughs> That's what the translation thing told us. <laughs> this is another chain. We actually saw the one we ate in last night in this place, and now this restaurant was also in the Mall of the World, and now it's here. No. I don't know what it's. What is it called? Queen. King Gigi Ching on taste. That was perfect pronunciation. They call me Ni Hao. Is that racist? I don't know. But are you, you need to eat your puff pastry for dessert. We got, they're big. There's some big tarts. We know tarts are Cantonese because we've tried them in Hong Kong. But how are they in Guangzhou in mainland China? They're warm, I'm feeling. So we might want to eat them now. Let's try. So, I got an egg cheese boy. You could have got cheese lava, but you didn't. Sorry, oh. did you mean to say egg or custard? Uh, a custard cheese boy. They got nice little gripping holes. Oh, it's so flaky. And it breaks. Oh my gosh. It, oh, it's not a nice gripping hole. You can't even hold it. No. Whoa. The outside is almost like a gram covering. So it's got that really sweet. Maybe that's... Is that B9? Okay. We're in. Wow, it's busy in here. Finalizing my review on the custard tart. It's kind of got like a gram outer. The custard inside isn't too sweet. It really gets salty with the cheese in there. But pretty solid overall. I didn't realize it would be so hard to grab it. That's crazy. It's a very flaky, soft, oozy, warm dish. I'm gonna dig into my uh, tarts I got here. First, the coconut tart. This one's staying together a lot nicer than yours. Are you yeah, jealous? What the, what the heck, I'm so jealous. Whoa. It's like a coconut muffin wrapped around in that egg tart like outside and it's really tasty. It's not even that coconutty, it's more buttery. But it's really good and really sweet. I like that, that's good, that's good. Let's move on to the milk tart. This has to be good, right? The milk spring rolls we got yesterday were amazing. Those are delicious. Okay. It's not bad. It's definitely an egg tart with milk. Oh. Because the top tastes like an egg. It's not bad. I prefer this over an egg tart. It's a little more sweet. Egg tarts aren't sweet enough for me, I think, for a pastry. But they're not bad. And this isn't bad either. Good part. We got some flat boy noodle heads. And that's officially what they're called, guys. So it's it's food from the Shaanxi province, which is in the northwest. I'm not 100% sure like what their big city is there, but I just know it's in the northwest because I looked up what these noodles are. And these noodles are just like on the wall. There's also some buns we got, so we got to imagine they're popular, but it kind of looks spicy. These noodles are called like Yang Bang or something like that, or something with B's and A's and N's and G's, and there's an I in there too, but <laughs> that's what they're called. So I guess I'll just mix this up. I would assume that's what you're supposed to do. Mix all these oils around, the garlics around. It's a big bowl, but like five noodles. I thought this was corn, but it's not. What is it? I thought it was corn too. I don't know. It's like some sort of bean or something. Whoa, that smells really good. It smells, oh, come on, dude. This is going to get messy, I think. I'm trying to grab these big noodles and there's a red sauce. 
Don't wear your white shirts today, anybody. All right, well, it's pretty mixed up. These are gonna slide right out of the chopsticks for sure. Let me grab my bowl and I will indulge myself on a young ball. That's right, don't even ask. Chili oil with chopstick. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it's so big. I'm getting launched. How do you get this out? I'm gonna try to cut it. I'm gonna try to cut it. This might be illegal, but it's my only option at this point. We're here, ready to rock and roll, baby. As Jablinski Games would say. Oh, these are slippery boys. Yeah, they're just gonna launch. Oh my gosh, it's just so big. It's like a lasagna noodle. I'll dive in just so you can so you can know if it's spicy or not, so you can prepare yourself. All right. That's good. It's very interesting because it's not like a since it's an oil, it's not like it's not a sauce, so it doesn't come with these saucy flavors. It just has a very mild, oily texture and sensation in your mouth. The spice is very, very mild. Not much at all. But you should be fine. Did we prepare with our chopstick skills before we came to China? I went to like one restaurant that had chopsticks before we went, and then I didn't use them. That's pretty epic. All right, I'm gonna try to eat now. Jump in. Oh gosh, I'm getting worse. Ooh, the texture is just amazing. This is a good old sloppy nude. Thank you. And yeah, overall very delicious. It's not like a crazy slap you in the face. It's more of a smooth flavor throughout. It's a pretty, like, natural kind of flavor. It's just, it is what it is. You can see how it's gonna taste from the outside, which is good. What is this? It's green. This tastes like a green vegetable. We'll move it over to the dumplings. These are pork and other thing dumplings. So this will be an interesting one to try. We got them dipped in the sauce and well, let's down them and clown them. The sauce is very different than the usual. It's hard to pinpoint the sauce. It's obviously a soy sauce base, some vinegar in there, but I don't know. There's something about it that is definitely different. It's got like a deep taste to it. I don't know how you describe it. Maybe it's, maybe it's like a dark soy sauce or something. Yeah. It's got like a deep dark flavor in there. They're definitely, they're not soup dumplings. But they're really good. So I think soup dumplings always pack a little more punch when you bite into them. These ones are definitely very good steamed pork dumplings. Pretty solid, pretty solid. I would eat a lot of those. Because they're easy to pop back. And poppable. I think I prefer this over the dumplings. I'm liking the dumplings more Really? So far. Look at that, you get two different opinions. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Tri-Fate, where it may say three, but it's only two. Now, we're gonna move on to these pork buns, which are very interesting and they're very heavily advertised about this place. The outside so far is sort of like a puffy pastry. Whoa, it's like a croissant. A croissant. A croissant. Let's fracking down this, I'm ready. Oh wow, very, very croissanty. Okay. The meat is juicy. It's like a pulled pork. It is, but it's got some Chinese spices in there. Mm. It's really like a pulled pork. And this one's not spicy at all. Uh-uh. He was very scared about if these things would be spicy. Nothing's too bad. No. And it's got sort of a bit of a sweetness in there. Honestly, this wouldn't strike me as a Chinese dish. No, it wouldn't. This would strike me as like a Eastern European dish almost. Meat stuffed in a bread. It's unique and it worked really well. Oh, that's good. That's Very really tasty. Good. And finally we have skewers and these claim to be mutton. It looks like mutton. We'll see what they are when we put them in, even if, if we could even tell. I don't know if I'm confident that we'd eat a meat and we'd be like, yeah, that's mutton. <laughs> Let's go. It smells like Indian food. It's really soft and tender, but also squishy on the inside. Please don't skew my eyeball, please. What'd you say? All the flavors on the outside. Oh wait, oh, this is a very unique sensation in my mouth. It's got sort of like this spicy aroma, 
but it's not super spicy. It has a, um, it tastes like masala. It kind of has that masala feel where it's like, it smells spicy, but then it just tastes like masala. This has the most total flavor out of anything we've eaten. It's definitely completely caked in whatever seasoning they put on this, because you can feel the granules of seasoning as you bite into it. It almost has like a oregano on it or something. There's sesame seeds. Right there, the long, those little boys might be some oregano. Or it's something of the sort, where it's like an herb. It kind of reminds me of a pizza. A pizza. A dang pizza. On a stick. Well, that was our franken meal here, and it was pretty dang solid. Our Chinese feast. We're gonna devour this stuff, and we'll let you know a little more after we're done. Guys, they got cocoa here. So there's a little special thing Tyler's gonna try, a new item. I get cocoa a lot in the Philippines, so... Why not try it in China as well? Weird thing about this cocoa is my Alipay didn't work because for some reason specifically this cocoa only accepts mainland China cards on Alipay. The only issues we've had with Alipay are due to Wi-Fi and getting locked out of his account almost. Never said anything about the specific card that was associated. Well, that was really interesting, but I just ended up paying the worker and then she paid for it. So, I mean, it worked out, but that is really interesting. Hopefully that does not happen in a uh, different situation where we cannot pay. We've seen things about how easy it is to pay for everything. And sometimes Alipay is super convenient and easy, but sometimes it's had a lot of issues and we haven't been able to withdraw cash anywhere. Uh -oh. So, and none of the places typically accept foreign cards just straight up. As I've been using Alipay more, it's actually like doing things faster suddenly. Like at first I had to verify my card and get like an OTP and now just instantly, just boop, done. Pretty interesting. Just our thoughts on Alipay and paying for things in China. It's sort of very convenient and also sort of can be inconvenient sometimes. Depends on how good your uh, connection is. Let's try some cocoa. We're gonna do the review like this. All right, hey everybody, I'm uh, drinking some cocoa. It's a yogurt for, they have this strawberry yogurt milk tea thing. It's like new and they've been giving out free samples, so I had to get it right. It's so interesting. How much did this cost you, sir? 16. That is so cheap. It's like two bucks. It's like the same as the Philippines. I never would have expected that. China's been surprisingly cheap. The restaurant we just went to, all that food we got was 92 92 so inching in on about 14 dollars 15 dollars crazy china so many nice things and very affordable wow it's thick it's creamy it's yogurty and there's a real strawberry chunks inside i did, my first thing was just a straight up strawberry all mashed up that's really good. It's like better than a frozen yogurt or like a yogurt drink places yogurt drinks. And it's from fracking cocoa. And it's $2. That's a deal. If you got this in the US, I bet it'd be like seven bucks. At least. And if you went to one of the places that was trendy, it'd be like 14 bucks. So you're saying China's better than the US? Just kidding, we don't make blanket statements like that. No, we're not, we're not being too clickbait of vloggers today. This is a lot different than last night's. I can tell you that right away. We should have a city view, right? Yeah, we should. So let's see what it's like. I mean, this is a nice fancy thing right here. Here we go. Okay. It's kind of cold in here. The floor is super cold. I just heard a beep. Hopefully that's heating and not an AC. Okay, you know, it's a room pretty solid. Not too bad. It's basically as big as our last room. There's a city view. There's an old cathedral right there. That might be, I think I saw on Google, uh, that's like one of the oldest Gothic cathedrals in China or Southern China. Oh, very specific. Yeah, it it's is. like an ESPN stat. <laughs> wow, you get a, a decent like 180 view. Some condo building, some, a complex of the same building over there. You can't see down to the lit up towers down there anymore. We get a little bit of a different view today. This is a totally different area of the city. We've gone more into downtown Guangzhou instead of out in that other like super fancy business district. It's reminding me more of, of Hong Kong now. Uh, obviously not as crazy, packed, busy, but it's definitely 
a more similar downtown area than that. This view gives me Macau vibes. Yeah. Like the apartment buildings. They're not as tall as the Macau ones, but the apartment buildings have that kind of like same feel to them. If you get in between those buildings, that's pretty... That might be like those Macau streets. Yeah. They just have them split with these massive hotel buildings. This window is fracking open. Holy nuts, it's a suicide window. That's epic. What do you mean there's bars here to stop you? You can't make it over those bars, right? No one will prevent me from my suicide. <laughs> Guys, suicide is bad. Talk to someone. I, I guarantee you someone cares about you. You might think no one cares, but someone does. It comes with a... I don't know what this thing is. Probably something disgusting and it just used to... touched... All right, let's go through the essentials here, guys. Very, very clean microwave. Definitely gonna be making good use of that thing. It has a washing machine that's still wet. We have a fridge. Noise. What the heck is this? At least it has the beads inside. It's a maraca. Hey, I'm from Mexico, yeah, yeah. We're very cultured. Oh, so you can shower in the sink. Oh, wait, there isn't a shower. <gasps> Holy nuts. The water pressure in Guangzhou seems like it's pretty good. That is a nice plus about China is they have already built-in heating for their water supply. That's a plus right there. The floor of this thing is looking a little sus. Let's give it a go. Oh, Jesus. Kind of like a mist. It's got water on the lens. Hey, GoPro, you're a bit wet. And instead of a bidet, they gave us this thing to wipe our buttocks, buttockses with. I saw that in the, in the Hilton too. Can we just wear that for fun? And that is the cheapest hotel we could find in Guangzhou. That was a reasonable, like reasonable niceness, and uh, wasn't Chinese only. For Chinese New Year weekend, because this one jumped on the night of Chinese New Year, very high, and then goes back down. <laughs> this is the haircut that will change your life. It's either gibberish or very deep to the point where I don't even understand what it means. I think you're just not on the intellectual level to understand that one. Clearly not. My you're life has not been changed. You're just an airhead for Acker. Bed test. Oh. My phone just went and hit my nut. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's firm. It's very similar to our first China hotel. It's a nice thick bed, as you can see here, but firm as a board. <laughs> Let's see the pillow. That's not like the correct way to do a pillow test, sir. It's not bad. It's not bad. Well, that's the suffocation test, yeah. sir. <laughs> Holy nut, that was pretty good. <laughs> kind of smells weird. It was chloroformed. <laughs> the check into this place was a little interesting. We, uh, I tried to message them on a Goda and they didn't respond. So I go to the location on the map, find the subway to it, walk here. There's like an office building, apartment building looking thing and that wasn't it. And then it just said check in and then it pointed check in down another hallway, check in into a room. And that wasn't the right one. So we asked Yo-Yo and they're like, down, first floor, and then another guy, Yo-Yo, and then he walked us to Yo-Yo and uh, we found the place. It seems very reminiscent to the Chungking Mansion in Hong Kong, which just has like a, it's just a big building with a lot of apartments. And apparently the most dangerous place in Hong Kong. I guess, we stayed there. And there's just separate check-ins for all of them and their own thing. But this one's way nicer than the Chungking Mansion. Are you kidding me? The Philippine Hostel, dude? <laughs> hey, and this one's also much cheaper than the Philippine Hostel <laughs> in the Chungking Mansion, too. Guangzhou prices for hotels weren't cheap compared to Southeast Asia, but Hong Kong was twice as much. Yeah. Crazy. But anyways, uh, it was a long check-in process, but eventually we got it, got it paid, and we came up here. The elevator was uh, a bit sketchy. It was doing some funky things, but you know, what can you expect in the... Uh, Financial building, the Mingjiang fin financial building. We press 18, which is our floor, and then it just highlights 17 because, you know, we're taking the scenic route. Well, we're here. We got a new area to explore, 
and uh, we'll be here for three days, so we'll be able to really jump into it. It's raining and freezing outside. We will see where we can get today without getting hypothermia. Let's hope this rain clears up. Hey dude, you ready to go outside? I'm ready. Whoa, where'd you get those gloves? Found them in the street. They got, they gave me a special discount. It was only like a thousand. It's a crappy day. It was just like this yesterday. It's supposed to be like this tomorrow. <laughs> but my gosh, it's 47 degrees and rainy. It says it feels like, like low 40s. It feels like it. It's not, it's not fantastic. The rain just makes it so much worse. It didn't rain this much yesterday and now it's kind of a steady stream of rain, which makes it a, a lot, lot worse. But we're going to soldier on. We just need to wait two days and it'll be nice and warm out. Oh, great. Two, you mean two days out of our five? <laughs> <laughs> we're the loudest people here by far. Yeah, no one's talking. Vloggers, so we have the privilege. Yeah. Troll lawns dim sum. It's everywhere. Dang. Well, we went to a chain. So we took the metro down another two lines and now heading across to a little island over here. Uh oh. Wait. Shamian Island. It's an interesting area of the city. It's like a European architecture, fancy style island in the middle of Guangzhou, China. They have this in China? This is what China looks like? They, the media lied to us? <laughs> Are we in China or London? You might see one of those as one of our titles for this video. Do you know why? Because you might have clicked on it because of that. <laughs> so let's see what it looks like. <laughs> A lot of residential buildings in this area. A lot. It's like condo after condo. I remember seeing this area in pictures, specifically saying what to do in Guangzhou and one of the things was shopping and I remember this area specifically. Oh, I mean it looks like an area you could get some shopping, some hay tea, some of the dim sum Hagen -Dazs? place. $20 ice cream. Is this Germany or the Philippines? Uh, is this Germany or China? Are we in Amsterdam or are we in China? I don't even know anymore. Is that a canal? I don't even know anymore. Dude, this is pretty nutty, dude. Wow. This is very odd. It's, it's so much different than everywhere else in the city. It's just all of a sudden that you got a different style of road, different style of sidewalk, trees lining the streets. There are trees lining the streets in the other areas, but the buildings are completely different. Hold that thought. Holy nuts. Holy nuts. His name is Eduardo. That's European. It's definitely an interesting street. It's very peaceful, very big trees, it's, some, decor some decorations. It's kind of more like a park than anything else. That's true. Cause there's no cars allowed in this area either. I just saw a car drive by over there. In this specific, oh, there's bikes. In this specific little small square, <laughs> there's not cars, just bikes. Yeah, I thought this was gonna be like kind of a touristy, like popping like shops and stuff, but it's actually more like a park with some like older colonial looking buildings. And then there's like been two total shops I've seen in this whole time we've been walking. Not what I expected but it's a nice, if I was expecting a park, I would have been very like, oh, okay. But I was expecting something else. So I'm not, now I'm like, oh, okay. Confusion, but it's cool. Chinese New Year is, this is their full display here. All these little hanging frackers. Guess we'll just head down a little farther and see if there's anything else. And then the exploration continues. Let's go. Yeah. It's really beautiful, isn't it? Not the flowers I'm talking about, but just life. Because life is strange. We're all just beautiful flowers. 
and we're gonna make it, all right? So hang in, hey, okay, come back, come back. It's an interesting area now down by the old Pearl River. This river right here is an interesting river because uh, somewhere in the range of 80 to 90 million people live right next to this thing in this Pearl River Bay Delta area, which is an absurd amount of people. That was a great way of explaining I'm, what it is. I mean, we're basically informational travel bloggers. We love to inform our audiences about things that we go to. I want to look at movie water. Suddenly, out of nowhere, there's just like food stalls and restaurants and like English all over the place, as if this is like one of the big tourist spots. Oh, look at over there. So this is what I was kind of expecting, like shops and food stalls down. And now when you come by the river, they're finally all popping up. So, do you see what I see? A shibu, a shiba shibu emo. So you guys didn't know this river, actually, I'm gonna continue our informational segment. The water in this river actually comes from the Rocky Mountains in the United States. Really? How do they, they get to the ocean? They import the water. Oh, that's interesting. Well, that's a river with a nice plot of buildings on the other side. What the heck is that being I built over there? No, it's cool. River cruise, party boat, yeah. party boat, party boat. Oh, it looks like, I wonder if there's heating in there. It's closed off, so I'd assume there is, actually. The Pearl River. Look at those yachts over there. I own one of those back home. It's just a big old yacht. And those yachts are also imported from the Rocky Mountains. We have our yachts in the Rocky Mountains? Very practical, I know. Hey, you never know what's coming down the old Rocky Mountain rivers. All right, let's go break into that building over there. It looks cool. It does. That was uh, another day in Guangzhou. We have explored some more unique areas of this city, a tourist area. Got to see some Chinese New Year decorations. Ate some yummy food. Some very yummy food. We're gonna continue the adventures and uh, keep seeing what China has to offer. Here's to good weather in the next few videos. We'll see. We're in the White Swan Hotel. It's just randomly just right in the Shaiman area. There's just European streets and then a massive luxury hotel. Like this thing's like 20 plus stories. I know there's a super famous restaurant in here. It's like one of the must eat things in Guangzhou. So we're gonna check out the price. If it's absurdly expensive, we're not gonna go because I'm sure we can find just as good of food on the street for much cheaper. But if it's reasonable, maybe we'll try some things.